G'day everyone, it's Angela Ramora here. I'm your favorite Australian and the real estate dingo bringing you another vlog. And today I'm talking about this, buying properties internationally and what you should look out for. Let's get it started. So guys, check this out. I'd like to consider myself a pretty well-traveled individual. Um, I remember that um, you know my mother and I would constantly be traveling back and forth between Australia and Europe. Um, I was fortunate enough to um, uh, play professional soccer when I was 18, so I lived in Hong Kong. Um, right now, my, my mother is living in Croatia, my dad's in Australia, I live in the US, um, and I own real estate all over the world too. So um, one of my hobbies is kind of looking at deals uh, worldwide, um, getting into the nitty gritty um, of you know what's going on in that particular country. And I remember growing up as a kid, always having this fantasy or dream of traveling the world with an empty briefcase and then getting to my destination with a piece of property waiting for me there where I would have all of my belongings. So it was something that I kind of you know took into um, the, the latter part of my life and uh, you know circumstances allowed me to do these awesome things. Um, so right now, you know, I own a, a property in Croatia. I own a property in Japan. I own three properties in the Bahamas. Um, I don't own anything in Australia. I'm looking for something there right now. I'm just trying to think if I own anything else. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Um, but I'm always shopping. I'm always looking. I've checked out Cuba. Um, so once again, I'm pretty well traveled in, and I know a thing or two about buying properties internationally. Um, another thing, you know, through my turnkey company here um, in the US, I've also spoken to a lot of investors um, that uh, live abroad that have invested in the US. So uh, look, every uh, country has its own laws and regulations, okay? I guess the first step of buying a property overseas um, you know, would be, uh, first of all, you need to figure out where you want to buy and why you want to buy there, right? Um, uh, for me, it was just uh, one of those things where I was just randomly looking for deals um, and I kind of started to establish relationships and one thing led to another and I ended up buying a property. The Bahamas was a long-term dream of mine to own in the Bahamas, um, so that was kind of planned, um, but not really, uh, you know, the Japan purchase. Um, so look, I guess you need to establish where you want to buy and why you want to buy there. Okay, I think that's very important. Buying property for the purpose of just buying it, um, I mean, that's, that's pointless. Um, you know, I think that you're just adding a junk asset to your portfolio, which is not going to help you achieve financial freedom and it's not going to help you get closer to where you need to be. So there needs to be a method behind your madness, okay? Um, step one, um, you know, uh, another thing that you need to uh, really focus on guys is, is don't jump into anything, okay? Um, learning a new market, learning a new country can take years. So um, like with anything in real estate, um, there's only so much that you can do when it comes to the online stats and demographics and, you know, the projections of that economy, where it's going and what it's doing, blah, blah, blah. Um, I really think that you need to focus on establishing trust and relationships with key individuals um, in a specific market before you, know, you take the plunge and purchase a property there. Um, I think the most important individual, in my opinion, when purchasing internationally would be a, a, a real estate attorney, right? Um, uh, in Australia, for example, um, uh, you cannot purchase a property. There's no title companies there. A solicitor will do the closing, okay? Um, ultimately, the solicitor will look after your best interests. You know, some of the things with the Australian market, they changed the rules recently, but there's very high stamp duty that you need to pay. And I think that the laws have changed now for foreigners looking to buy, okay? Um, so not many foreigners, I think, can buy as, as swiftly as they could back in the day in Australia. I know a lot of countries have similar restrictions. Um, I know in Japan, um, when I submitted offers on a few properties, the folks there did not want to sell a property to a, um, uh, uh, an American man or an Australian man. Um, I, I'm not sure why, but there must be some kind of uh, prejudice there um, against Americans and Australians. They're like, nah, it doesn't matter how much he pays, we don't want to sell him a property. So those are things that you need to understand too. There's a lot of cultural differences in some of the markets. Uh, Cuba, for example, I did my research on the Cuban real estate market. I think there's a lot of opportunity there, but due to the embargo, you cannot own a property in your name, okay? Um, but you can literally buy waterfront properties in Havana. I've traveled to Havana a few times for five to $10,000. It is unbelievable. Um, I think that one day, if they ever lift the embargo, a lot of potential in Cuba. Bahamas, 
Um, everything's on island time over there. It takes six months to close on a purchase. I also think there's some amazing opportunities there. Multiple hurricanes, global financial crisis. The, the, the Bahamas are on their knees. Um, there's a lot of cheap waterfront property. I own a lot. I own a few condos. It's amazing to be buying there right now. Croatia, um, you know, where my parents are from. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a very cheap market to live in. You can live the life that you want for two to 3,000 American dollars a month. You can buy an amazing property for $100,000 and you're within five hours drive of Italy, Austria, you know, Slovenia, some of these beautiful countries, a lot of skiing, a lot of awesome shopping, a lot of great things to do. Um, so, but look, once again, you know, there are certain things in every market that have its charm, but that also have restrictions. Um, on, on what you can and cannot do as an international buyer. I'm taking too long here. I'm going to shut up now, guys. The, what you need to take away from this vlog is this. You need to find the right people like with any business venture. Um, the same goes for investing in any other market nationwide. Team up with the right people. Do due diligence online as much as you can. But at the end of the day, find the right people that you can trust that are going to be your eyes and ears, heart and soul on the ground. Another thing too, go and bloody travel there. Visit the market, see it, touch it, feel it. You need to understand it. You need to go there multiple times before you invest or before you purchase your holiday home or whatever it is. Um, so that's it, guys. Um, you know, this uh, Bahama dude, like, like everyone calls me in the, um, in the Bahamas and they call me Skippy in Cuba because of some cartoon that they watched for 30 years with a kangaroo. Anyway, it's signing out for now. Thank you so much for listening. Um, comment below. I'd love to know where you own real estate um, and, and what are some of the, the restrictions there or what are some of the pros. Um, that's it. I'm Angelo Ramora. I'm your favorite Australian and the real estate dinger. Catch you in the next vlog.